when I have a sample or a reference and when they are actually carved in wood, something happens in that process. I think hours and hours of work and also wood makes it human or uh, living. And uh, add something that you don't really feel in an actual object. So, yeah, I, I just love it. <laughs> uh, something that comes out of my heart. <laughs> Um, I chose wood as my medium, main medium, because I felt there was a lack of woman's voice. Uh, and at that time, it was very challenging because I had to learn all the basics and in art school, my teachers couldn't really help me. So I had to sit with wood carvers for about a year and learn all the techniques. Uh, so it took me about good 15 years to get all the basics and be where I am right now. So now I'm really, really excited about my main mediums of wood and miniature painting techniques and how I'm blending them together and doing installation based work. I'm pushing the boundaries and doing something which has not been done before. Whenever I do a new work, um, I have told myself it should be better than uh, my previous work. Uh, it should be more challenging. Um, it should push the boundaries even more, and that's what I do. Although I still work a lot in wood and I do miniature painting, but I have to be aware that it's uh, what I'm doing is uh, moving into the right direction. It's pushing the boundaries of the medium and my expression, yeah, there is more depth of concepts uh, and there is more technique uh, involved. So maybe I'm producing less work now, but my work is a lot more detailed. I am flexible. When I start with an idea, I let myself um, think about it more, do even more, continue to research and let myself change the idea if I feel like it. I have tried different things, uh, blood stain, uh, staining them fully in one color, using different woods, uh, trying out different uh, textures, uh, and then, you know, using them. And the outcome that I feel best suits my concept. I, I was probably like a, a, an average kid trying to do well in studies, but to be honest, I never enjoyed my school life. I, will, I didn't have a personality in which I could just repeat what I was taught or uh, write exactly the way it was written in the books. So it was more like a little bit of a burden on me. My family wanted me to become a doctor. Uh, I'm originally from Pakistan in South Asia. When kids are good in studies, their families expect them to be either engineers or doctors. These are the two professions which are considered respectful and successful later on. So, and that was not something that came out of my heart. I can't even see blood. I actually pass out if I see blood. So I tried, uh, I took science subjects in uh, my high school and uh, tried to please my family, but just couldn't do it. And I had to tell my family, and especially I remember telling my father, so he let me try fine art because I used to love to draw. Even when I was uh, doing biology, practical books, I would enjoy more drawing than you know learning anything else. When I decided I want to go to a professional art school, my, it became real to my family. And they were sitting on one side of the table and I was on the other and they didn't want me to go to art school because art schools were considered a place where you get too much freedom and you can do whatever you like. I'm a self-made yes, and I'm the first one in my family to take art as a profession. There is no one in my family who is in that profession. Uh, but I can tell you that that uh, I graduated with honors. I was a scholarship student all four years. I was called back as a faculty member right away, because of which I ended up becoming the youngest assistant professor in the history of art school. 
and I was able to establish myself within the next few years as an artist, as a teacher, and my family recognized that. And my father said in front of the whole family, it was the right decision and he's very proud of me. I had my teachers told me when I decided to start mostly working in wood as my major in the final years. And they said, we can't help you, go find yourself. And I said, okay, because I had this personality. I said, okay, I'll go find my way. And I went and started working with traditional carvers. Was it easy? No, they didn't have, they were not used to see a woman around them. I had to go through such difficult time that it broke me a couple of times and I was at the edge of giving up and I said, no, I cannot give up. So I turned back and then I was able to change things for other people who and students and girls who wanted to go and work in, in those areas. But was it easy? No. It was very difficult. But I also think a lot of that gave me an inspiration for my work too. Today, why I'm talking about all these issues? Because I've gone through them. And I know majority is going through it. And nobody's talking about it. My first grant was small from Four Culture, but I was so excited and that allowed me some freedom to do experimentation that I was trying to do at that time. And the fabricated ants, which are now uh, one of the major symbols and part of my work and installation, is actually because of that small grant. I always say about the challenges for artists, they are very similar uh, no matter where you are. The basic challenges are same. Hard work. I think this, these are the basics. Um, you have to work hard, you have to know your direction, and you have to know there is no shortcut. You have to be patient and wait for that time and slowly work towards that.